so I changed my title, which was originally scheduled, just because I, I thought uh, after last week, in the middle of last week, that it was more fitting, this, this uh, subject was more fitting to the general audience here. So sorry for those who came for the previous talk, but the, you, can, you can discuss later. Uh, and also because uh, one thing that I retained from last week is that uh, there was a big emphasis on uh, how correlation uh, influences large deviation properties. And so that's a good uh, example. And we'll be talking of a subject I'm involved for a few years now, is uh, you take a random walk, say uh, you have your chalk and you uh, cover, you, you write continuously and randomly on the blackboard, and you wait for the time you have covered everything. This is called the cover time. It's in two dimension, and uh, that's exactly the problem we'll be interested in. So uh, XT is uh, the random walk on the uh, t is discrete time, okay? And torus uh, is uh, just z divided by n z. It's a torus of uh, linear size n, and I'm in dimension d. Uh, we will take d larger or equal to 2, uh, as I will explain quickly. So uh, you let the, the walk evolve, and you have periodic boundary conditions. Okay, so up goes like that. Now, uh, you, I could not consider, I could as well consider uh, a Markov process on a finite say space, but let's uh, consider this one. And the uh, cover time is uh, um, just the time you need to cover everything. So uh, you will have to consider heating times of points. Let me say nx. This, uh, of course, is uh, the minimum of uh, the uh, <coughs> t larger or equal to 0, so that xt is equal to x, heating time of x, and the cover time is just uh, the maximum of those, Cn equal to the maximum over x on the torus. Let me denote the torus by Tn, forget the notation uh, d, index d, maximum of uh, the heating times. Okay. <clears throat> what is a random walk on a, on a torus? Well, it's easy, it's just you take the random walk on the full lattice, and you t look at it modulo n. So that's easy. I'll denote by s that guy, if necessary, the random walk on the torus, and say pi n, the projection, mod n. All coordinates are taken mod n. Uh, that's the setup. And uh, it's something interesting just because it's a clean and nice model, uh, because it has application in uh, theoretical computer science or transmission problems, of course, and uh, because it has an, an, a nice structure, it is a maximum of correlated random variables. Random variables, we understand them rather easily, but the correlations are possibly difficult to handle. So let's uh, start with the uncorrelated case, which corresponds to d equal to infinity, where, with a little of imagination, you can see that you have a kind of walk on the complete graph. It's just the simple random walk on the complete graph. Complete graph of size n to the d, uh, n to the d points, okay? And so, but this is exactly the so-called coupon collector problem uh, with n to the d images. You have n to the d images, you are picking up at each time t one of these images at random and no correlation between your pick and uh, you are looking for the first when you complete totally the uh, collection. 
Okay. Now, if you take finite dimension, then the correlation becomes stronger and stronger. Correlations. And are increasing as d decreases. And d equal to 1 is excluded on my talk because it's uh, something uh, too particular. Because uh, you just look at the maximum and the minimum of random walk and choose. That's okay, it's escape the problem that we want to look at. We want to look at geometric problems, in fact. So, uh, and of course, uh, there will be a big difference between uh, <clears throat> d larger or equal to 3. So, in fact, two cases uh, d to 3 or that is uh, the case where the random walk is transient and the case where the random walk is very current. Because look at my picture. If I have a transient uh, process on the, on the big domain, I'm just looking at, say, uh, periodization of it, then uh, uh, to visit a point, it's just a matter of I start somewhere and I do it right now, a neighboring point, I do it right now, or I go to infinity and I need another excursion to do it. In the recurrent case, it's a different setup because I know that if I start here, then I will clean up all the neighborhood of the starting point before hitting distant points. So it's totally a different process. We already feel that there will be a difference in the relation structure. So uh, let me give you, uh, okay, let me start my notes in the right order. <laughs> okay, so we will look at uh, asymptotics when n goes to infinity of, uh, of the covered sign. So uh, uh, let me give you some uh, benchmark. So in the uh, coupon collector case, what you know is that uh, Cn is n to the d log n to the d. That's the law of large number for coupon collector, the first term. And then you have uh, fluctuations which are given by Gamble distribution. I denote by g, g, not the Gaussian, but the Gamble distribution. Okay, and then you have higher order. So you have a law of large number, you have uh, fluctuations, uh, theorem, uh, and this is go back to erdos Schreni in the early uh, 60s. So it's a long... Uh, it's, okay, it's no dimension. It's the independent case. Okay? And uh, uh, so, of course, we are interested in uh, five dimension. So let me start to tell you how I behave the heating times. So the, the heating times, it's not so difficult to, to have their uh, order of magnitude. If you look at the expected value of the heating time, fixed point, ah, by the way, what is expected value like this? For me, it will be for the walk starting from a uniformly distributed initial point. I need to specify what is the initial point, because if it is x itself, then there is no question. So the best choice is to start from the uh, invariant measure, which is the uniform. Okay? So this is always with respect to the uniform distribution. And uh, the asymptotics are well known. This is g of 0, n to the d, if d is larger or equal to 3. And this is 2 over pi uh, times uh, n to the 2 log n to the 2 in dimension 2. Okay. What, what are these uh, quantities? The g is just the green function. So it's uh, the g of x is the expectation starting from x of the number of visits up to time infinity at the location of zero, at the site zero. And so it's a solution of delta G equal to minus delta zero. Okay, delta, capital delta is uh, discrete Laplacian, little delta is uh, unit mass. <coughs> and 
Sorry? No, this is on the on the ED. The Asian is on ZD. Because here I'm talking of asymptotics, and the asymptotic is for n goes to infinity, so on the right hand side there is no n, in spite of appearances. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean for D infinity and the Sorry? When you say D infinity. Okay, no, I, I say that uh, in very high dimension. The correlation disappears because uh, the, the steps become the direction in which you take the steps are essentially independent because d is large, okay? And then I, I, I come back, I come into the uh, the framework of I have a finite set that I call again, but apparently this is what bothers you, n to the d <laughs> of cardinality n to the d, and there I'm picking independent uh, points. So th th this is just what I mean. And uh, what is uh, the, the extra factor? Sorry, this is not, yeah, this is what I mean. So uh, what is the extra factor which is coming here? The two over pi times log of the cardinality and, uh, of the state space n, n squared is just the, uh, the, uh, the value of the green function at uh, point zero for the random walk killed when you reach uh, farther di uh, far distance uh, n. So here, for, to understand the last line, you have to understand that the 2 over pi log n is just an equivalent of uh, the gn of 0, where this is again the green function for a killed random walk. For random walk killed on, at distance n. And it's defined in a, okay, an analogous way, but you have to take care of the fact that this, uh, okay. So let me, uh, let me tell that uh, when, so this is uh, zero. This is the starting point x zero of my walk. And uh, whenever I look at the random variable tn of x itself and not the expected value, then I am in this uh, procedure. With large probability, the uh, starting point is far away from zero. So it's not on the first excursion that I will hit the point x, which is in my picture close to x. Well, let's take x equal to zero to, to simplify. And so uh, I need to to start an excursion from the boundary, from the maximal distance on the torus, from the point I'm shooting at, and hoping for this excursion uh, to to go to to visit the point. And that's very unlikely. So I'm essentially in a head and tails uh, uh, game in which the probability of success is small. So Tn of x is close to a geometric distribution. So Tn of x is approximately a geometric distribution with a small probability of, uh, of success. Okay? Probability of success, in fact, is, uh, if I call this uh, An, these uh, terms, the geometry, the geometry, the mean of uh, the parameter of the geometric is one over a. It's a small guy. Okay, so you, you need uh, many tentative excursions in order go, go, coming from infinity on the torus to 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 find the point. So because of uh, this uh, finding, uh, we, we understand that we need to approximate this by exponential distribution with mean a n. Let me denote x of a n, the one with mean a n, OK? And this uh, rough computation tells me that 
No surprise, the heating time of a point divided by uh, mean value converges in distribution when n goes to infinity to exponential to an exponential distribution with mean a uh, sorry mean one. That's just a formal and formal computation, but it's uh, rather safe in most of uh, what we will consider, most of the things that we will consider. So uh, we have to view our problem as a maximum of correlated of exponential variable, because the term an just factors out. Okay? And of course, we need to take care of uh, the possible dependence between the, <coughs> the exponential. Okay, let me proceed further. There is, uh, so there, is an, there are many literature on, on this problem. It's, of course, a very natural and simple to state problem, so a lot of people have worked on that. And uh, Aldous is the first one who has brought this in the probabilistic context. And uh, so one student of his, Matthews, uh, proved that uh, in very general Markov setup, if you look at Cn and expected value of Cn, so the uh, mean cover time and the typical and most of the value of the cover time uh, are bounded, so that's not a good sentence, of course, are bounded by... Uh, <clears throat> this quantity, uh, expectation Tn of x, okay, uh, provided that it does not depend on x, does not depend much on x, and in many problems that you can imagine, and here is the case, because I start from the uniform. This is the case, times the log of the cardinality of the state space, the number of point that you have to visit. It's, uh, it's amazing, it's a general statement which uh, has been found in the early 90s. And so we have already, uh, this is our AN, we have already uh, a bound for CN. And uh, this bound proved to be sharp for our model that uh, we are considering, the random walk on the torus. But, uh, so it's sharp, uh, so let me state a law of large number. Indeed, we have uh, the fact that uh, the cover time uh, divided by a n goes to 1 in probability when n goes to infinity. It's a statement, true in all dimensions, and uh, which just means that uh, you are able to complete the uh, reverse inequality uh, and understand how, what is the precise statement under uh, the vague uh, formula I wrote. And I mentioned three that was found very uh, quickly by Aldous in 1990. And, uh, but for d equal to two, that was another affair. And there was a famous celebrated paper by Dembo, Perez, Perez, Perez. Yeah. In 2004, uh, important paper which proved uh, that in two dimensions it works also. So uh, let me explain to you uh, why Two dimension is uh, so uh, different. It's, I told you already, it's because the cover process is different. Why it is so difficult now? It is so difficult because the correlation is much stronger. Again, if you uh, know that you visit uh, point x equal to zero, then uh, you will uh, up to a certain time then you will know, uh, okay, you, you will have a bigger probability to have visited the point y which is close to x equal to zero. Okay, you, you have a big probability. So the correlations are very strong in dimension two due to recurrence. The fact that you, 
just clean up the neighborhood of points that you have visited before going far. And technically, you said that when the, the correlations extend over the entire torus. The correlation extend, yeah, yeah, they are a kind of a complicated geometric object which uh, depends, uh, yeah, which. And now, the, the correlation decreases logarithmically uh, in x, in two dimensions, and they decry, decrease polynomially in uh, higher dimension. And now if you look, for instance, at the mixing time, because at some point you will need to work seriously, not the, like the formula I'm writing, so you need to have independence, so you, you need some mixing properties, yeah? Yeah, okay, so an is not that. Thank you. So let me call this a prime n. And a n is the one with an extra logarithm. So let me write it. Thank you, that's very important. It's, uh, okay, a constant time n to the d log n, dimension 3, and it's uh, 2 over pi, okay, let me put it like that, 4 over pi, uh, log uh, n to the 2 log square n in dimension 2. Thank you, thank you, François. Okay, here there was a prime n, but here I really mean a n, which is the Matthew bound, and for definitely, for definitely, let me extend my parent, my guy. Okay, so uh, technically you need to <laughs> prove that the geometric that I was. Uh, is really a geometric, that is uh, the Bernoulli, which are beyond our in kind of independence. You need independence of the excursion, at least in an aesthetic way. And so to do that, you need a uh, comparison between the heating time and the mixing time, or the cover time and the mixing. The mixing time is what? It's just the time for the walk to go at distance n, n to the square, okay, n to the two. On the other hand, uh, we are looking at objects like heating times or cover time, which uh, are of the size n to the d times log n. So you, in dimension larger than 3, you have a polynomial uh, difference in n, but uh, in dimension 2, you just have only logarithmic uh, factor between hitting time and mixing time. So this uh, makes the, te the techniques uh, difficult and the question really settled. I mean, uh, it was not clear at the beginning that uh, things were working like that. Okay? Let me uh, go more uh, quickly. So, uh, now if you want to look at fluctuations. Okay? Yeah? Sorry? Here? It's log n to the square. This term is log n squared, that is 2 log n. <laughs> okay, so uh, fluctuations. So you, you recall the uh, Erdoshini uh, result. And so what happens? Things uh, work in the same way. So uh, you have Gamble. fluctuations uh, in dimension in dimension sorry three and higher uh, um, so well I don't okay, let me not try the, the statement but you you imagine it's just uh, an extension of, uh, of this one. And, okay, and this is uh, not obvious at all, and you have to wait a paper of uh, David Bell, in 1913, uh, 2013, to, to see it. But now, uh, two dimension is really interesting because uh, you are not in this case. Uh, um, actually, uh, you know uh, the following, you know that uh, the cover sign 
is typically fitted with a large probability uh, of order. Uh, so the leading term will be a so uh, for the pi n squared log uh, n to the squared, okay? And then there will be a correction uh, constant times uh, log n times uh, log uh, n. And the constant C was uh, found, okay, there, there was different constant from upper bound to lower bound in a paper by Yan Ding in 12. And uh, recently you have a nice paper by Bellius and Kistler, which uh, finds, so it's published this year, which finds, which uh, determines the true value of the constant C. Give you the second order asymptotics of the, um, of the cover time. But it gives it uh, not in the discrete case, in the continuous case. It's time to, to, for me to tell you that I was discussing random walk, but you can as well consider the brown motion on the torus. Uh, look at an enlargement of the brown motion with a radius, uh, a fixed radius, and wait for the time that your enlarged uh, brown motion covers everything. The enlarged brown motion is called the Venus sausage, and this is what uh, Frank will be talking about. Uh, and uh, you have uh, exactly the similar uh, problems which are arising. And, okay, the two fields are progressing, of course, uh, simultaneously. And there is more symmetry uh, in the Brownian case, and this is what Berlius and Kistler were uh, using uh, heavily to, to prove this result. So we know that. And uh, there is a famous uh, conjecture by uh, Bramson and Zaituni. Uh, so it's 0, 9 which is the fact that if you look at the cover time divided by n squared and take the square root of it, then it is tight around its The median is just the square root of what I have written here up to there uh, with the correct constant c. But the, the nature of the fluctuations I mean, it's certainly not a gamble. It's uh, something which is uh, unknown. And uh, so that, that's an important question. And it's for us the first time that the correlation appears. They, they start to show up. Because uh, if I look now at the model where I, I, I'm looking at a maximum of, uh, say, exponential variable with the right parameter, but which are independent, then the asymptotes I will get will be exactly uh, those of R. de Schreni. And this is, of course, not uh, compatible with uh, the independence. No. Is, is something OK with the correction term? You, is there an S missing in the correction term? Yes, there is N squared missing, sure. Yeah, sorry. So what I, what I say is that be, beside the log squared, you have a log times a smaller term, log log, which is a kind which is commonly called the Derrida Brunet correction, uh, because it has a universal uh, aspect. Uh, it has been found, for instance, in other problems where you look at maximum of correlated random variables with logarithmic correction. Uh, like uh, the Gaussian, the Gaussian free field in two dimension, or, uh, okay. or branching random walks. Okay. So uh, what I want to discuss is um, we can go to the next page. <laughs> is uh, what happens for large deviation? Because that's the, the subject of uh, the, uh, the conference. 
And so let me write the large equation of the LC. So look, these equations. There are two large deviations we can imagine. We have the uh, upper tail. The upper tail is the concerned uh, with the probability for the cover time to be larger and a fraction larger than one of the uh, typical cover time. So let me take gamma larger than one, this fraction. And I'm looking at the probability starting from inv invariant measure, Cn, to be larger than gamma times the typical cover time. Okay. And this is uh, equal to uh, exponential of minus n to the d one. No, sorry. Yeah. Of course not. That's a polynomial decay. 1 over n to the d times 1 minus gamma is little of 1 as n goes to infinity. So uh, the, the rate, the, the, <coughs> the, uh, the rate, the, the, okay, the large deviation makes uh, this kind of precision. And this is valid uh, for all d. And uh, this comes from, uh, let's say, I can, I should give credits for a dimension large or equal to three to a paper of Frank and Jesse Goodman, which is published this, uh, no, in 15, 2015, I guess, uh, in the Brown and Motion case. Uh, it's just one particular uh, result in this paper, which contains many other uh, results, but this is a byproduct. Um, um, it's gamma minus one. Okay, and it's true also in dimension two. There is no, uh, okay. There is no proof uh, of that, but uh, okay, uh, you, you can check that it, uh, it works. The upper tail of the large deviation, you don't see still the difference due to the correlation. To make your process uh, of covering slower, uh, you don't see the, the difference. Now, uh, the difference comes into the lower tail. So now you take a gamma between 0 and 1. <laughs> I try to, to remember that it's less than 1 this time. That's <laughs> the right stupidities. And uh, you look at the probability for the cover time to be very slow, very, deep, very small. The cover process to be very quick. Less than gamma a n. The, this will decay, not in a polynomial way, but in a stretch exponential way. It will decay like e to the minus n to the stretch power, which will be 1 minus gamma in dimension larger than 3. Uh, this again uh, can be from uh, Goodman the other paper. And in dimension 2, but in the uh, continuous case, it's true here. In the discrete case, what happened? What happened is that you have a different uh, exponent in the exponential. It's one minus square root of gamma. It's uh, noticeable because it uh, will come from the correlation. And if you think one moment, you are asking for an untypical event that uh, your torus is covered, your blackboard is covered very quickly. <laughs> of course, uh, recurrence helps you because, okay, if you can ask the walk to visit a uh, kind of grid that uh, large level and then it will clean up the neighborhood of uh, 
the point that you are, you are showing in this grid. And so in this way, uh, recurrence is, uh, is helping you. That's why the tail is fatter. So that's, uh, that's an interesting uh, result that we, we get with uh, Christophe Galesco, uh, Sergei Popov, and Marina Vashkovskaya in 2015. And in this paper, we also uh, argue that, uh, okay, in dimension two, for the uh, upper tail, we, this statement is correct. So in the remaining time, let me explain to you briefly uh, why uh, to justify how this happened. And OK, I will not give you the whole story for sure. And, uh, I will just explain to you a sketch of proof of the lower bound of the lower tail. I'm just looking at the lower tail. And I want to explain to you this guy. So, uh, and to give you a strategy for tilting the random walk on the torus in order to produce a deviation and to, co to compute then the cost of tilting. Strategy by tilting random walk into a tilted random walk and compute the probability of this uh, operation. So let me chop the full box, which is of size n, into box size uh, n to the alpha. Okay, alpha between uh, 0 and 1, even if alpha is less than square root of gamma. And eventually, ultimately, I will make alpha grows to square root of gamma at the end. And then let me do the following. I will look at my full time, which is gamma less than 1 times a n. And I divide the full time into equal time. So that's my full time. And I divide into as many boxes as we have. So uh, this is uh, the full time divided by the number of boxes, which is n to the power uh, one alpha. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry? Yeah. I have nothing in the pocket. I can, uh, I can close it down if you prefer. I can speak loud. Ah, okay. Okay. So, and uh, so you spend equal time in each of the box. You make a stupidly uh, parkour of the different boxes like that. And you enforce, so you have box. And on the case interval here, uh, you, you enforce uh, so the, the random walk tilde will be obtained from the simple random walk by enforcing uh, to, to visit the box BK during, and only the box BK during the case interval. Okay? So you, you spend the time in order to try to clean every small box in, uh, uh, during this particular time interval. This, of course, has a cost that I will try to estimate later. And uh, in this time interval, I'm just taking one minute more. You have a small box BK. You divide a slightly larger box B prime K. And you look at what happens. So you enter, the walk enters, and try, start to cover BK as you want. But uh, of course, it will go out. So what you do is, whenever it reaches here, you oblige it, you force it, and that's the tilt strategy, it's a tilting. 
the tilde strategy, to come back in a small time. The small is important because it reduces the cost uh, to the boundary of Bk, but not in a stupid way, in a way which corresponds to the entrance measure for the random walk on the torus defined by the big box big prime k when it enters again bk. And start again. So it starts again. It's existent. You make it enters according to the harmonic measure. And doing that, your tilt is said that uh, you reproduce inside BK exactly what the random walk on the torus B prime K would do really. And the trace on the, these uh, boxes will be the same as the trace of the, box, uh, of the true random walk on a large, slightly larger torus. You do the computation with that, and you find that, okay, so, so and you, you, you return to this guy, and you find it's gamma over alpha squared times the A of n to the size n to the alpha. So uh, n to the alpha is essentially the size of b prime k. So you can use the law of large number of dembo perez zaituni on the slightly larger box in order to know that with a big probability everything is covered inside here. And this will make you, uh, for the tilde random walk, uh, a not so small probability for covering all those boxes, which are not independent, of course. And checking what is the cost of this uh, procedure, this tilt, you see that you get this statement, okay, or rather uh, you prove that uh, uh, the for the tilted walk to cover everything will be at least uh, e to the minus n squared times 1 minus gamma. Uh, so you, uh, alpha, sorry. Because, uh, okay, you get the alpha, and then you, you, you let alpha go to, to square root of gamma. So this is how it works. Um, so I, I have uh, used all my time. Uh, I will not talk about the related problems, which are random interlacement, the random interlacement version of that in order to understand what is the covering process. And uh, at the moment, so uh, in connection with Franz Stork, uh, we, are, uh, we have cleaned up the, the discrete case and we are uh, heading, uh, we are uh, writing computing details, in fact, on the continuous case. So thank you very much. For the lower tail, when you take gamma going to zero, uh, shouldn't there be some kind of essential singularity because you need at okay. some kind of essential singularity saying that you need at least uh, a number of boxes. I mean, there's a cutoff in the time, right, for, from the lower limit. Uh, but here, if, you, if I naively take gamma going to zero, it looks something like a constant. There is, sorry, it's, uh, there is a power here. There is a D. Okay, I have no key. I have no chalk. Uh, well, th there is no. Uh, uh, we don't do any, um, let's say, a refinement on gamma. Uh, indeed, taking uh, gamma to zero would uh, bring us. Because there would be a cutoff from the lower side, right? Uh, and usually, I mean, it gives you some the kind cutoff of... cutoff from the lower side. I don't yeah. see what you mean. Because, I mean, like the uh, time, the minimum time to cover the uh, whole torus is the, the number of sites on the torus, if you just do a deterministic. Sure, sure, right? yeah. So therefore, I mean, it's ah, come up as yeah. some kind of essential singularity. Yeah, okay. so I, yeah. Uh, of course, division depends on the scale at which you want to, to look at the uh, rarity of the event. So that's, uh, this makes the difference between moderate deviation and large deviation, for instance. Okay. You are asking for very, very, very large deviation. This is a, a wild territory. The, this has not been explored so far. But uh, indeed, it's a question that you may, uh, you may ask. Yeah. 
that limit would correspond to a situation where you're really racing around the torus to do everything sort of very quickly. So, so that must be some kind of uh, very peculiar strategy. And very costly. <laughs> very costly, yes. Very costly. Exponential. It would be something like you're, 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 you're going uh, and visiting everything once. Uh, you know. This not, has not been explored uh, as far as I know. Thank you very much, Francis. Uh, No, no, just, I mean, maybe you already answered that, to that, but I, I don't see the, you, you have a strat, I mean, if, if you do the most stupid things, you will pay in square, okay. you, or in the, but where, where do you gain the strategy? Not, not in the, it's in each box, I mean, I, I, I missed the, the. Okay, first I gain that I can use the true law of, law of large number that object that I'm considering, which is random walk on the torus. It's on, to, on a different torus, of course. But what I gain is to place myself in this uh, procedure. That's very natural. You want to have uh, large deviation lower bound. What you do is you look for a measure which is absolutely continuous to your original one and which has uh, the event uh, that you are shooting at as a typical event. And this is exactly what I do except that my tilde is not typical, but it's not so, so stupid. And I, uh, this is uh, the fruit of the computation I'm... I'm <coughs> uh, but, uh, of course, the, uh, the, there is a questioning about... Uh, there is no uniqueness of the strategy I'm describing to you, because why to choose that or not this parkour? Uh, I mean... Now, a lot of things, I cannot say anything, for instance, for the conditioned measure. If I take the measure, condition on the fact that I have this unlikely event, then at this, um, at this level, I cannot, see, I cannot say anything. The random interlacement go in the other way. It tells you uh, what is uh, the conditional measure given that you have not cleaned around the point. That's another uh, another point, the, but the it does not answer. The order to, of the lower bound is different from the upper bound. How do you know this is the optimal strategy? No, I, it's just a lower bound. Yeah, but there is an upper bound. There is an upper bound which meets. I was uh, give you the strategy for uh, the lower bound of the lower tail. There is a proof for the lower, uh, the upper bound of the lower tail. Give you the same experiment. Otherwise, it would not be a theorem on the board. And this is uh, based on a completely different uh, procedure, because then you need to tackle the dependence. Here I have replaced random walk by random walk tilted, which is again Markov, uh, not homogeneous, but Markov. So I, my independence comes from the Markov property. Now, uh, when I look at the random walk on the torus itself, I have a strong dependence. Uh, uh, okay. I need to use other tools. And in fact, if you raise a question, uh, we have used the coupling process proce procedure, uh, which is called uh, soft local time. You can uh, generate Markov chains, say, from a Poisson process. And you can use the same Poisson process to generate all the Markov chain on the same space pay, state space with different transition probabilities, transition probabilities, just uh, changing the order at which you read the different points of your big Poisson process. And, okay, this is the kind of technique that we are, we are, we are using. It's uh, much more involved, otherwise I would have pre presented that part of the proof. <laughs>